Depreciation Basics Problem 2. On June 30th, year 1, Mellon Corp. purchased a printer for $52,000. It expects the printer to last for 4 years and have a residual value of $11,000. Compute the depreciation expense on the printer for the year ended December 31st, year 1, using the straight line method. We got depreciation. Remember, depreciation can be challenging. There's many different ways to calculate. There's all sorts of different variables. First thing to do, what is the question asking? It's saying to compute the depreciation expense on the printer for the year ended December 31st, year one. So the first year using the straight line method. Remember, a company can use all different types of method. Can use straight line, double decline balance, units of production. There's many, many others. Some of your digits, there's other ones out there. Most commonly used for financial accounting under GAAP is straight line method. Not required to use this method, but most commonly used. Most commonly used method. Now, let's go ahead. Let's look at the facts. Remember that accounting depreciation, again, is not the same thing as market value depreciation. It understands that property, property plant equipment, fixed assets, other than land, land, we don't depreciate. It's, it's not going to have the same value as it once was because of obsolescence and wear and tear. So keep that in mind. So June 30th, year one, Mellon Corp purchased a printer for $52,000. Okay, we got that. The formula for straight line method, remember, is cost minus residual value, which is also known as the salvage value, right? The scrap value at the end. Think of a car, perfect example. It's going to have scrap value for the metal at the end over the useful life. So let's plug in all of those numbers. We have a cost of $52,000. That's what the printer costs. Is there any residual value? Let's see. Residual value is $11,000. $11,000. So right there, that brings us down to $41,000 is the difference between 52 and 11 over the useful life. How many years? Estimated. Remember, it's all estimates. It's a accounting estimates. Four years. So 41,000 over four years. Is that how we calculate this? Do we take 41,000 over four years? Anything else we have to worry about? You might recall in a previous problem, we had to look at when the asset was placed in service. It was placed in service on June 30th, year one. So think about this. Again, unless the company, unless you're told otherwise, company is calendar year. So January 1st to December 31st is what we would call calendar year. We're asked to calculate the depreciation expense for the year and to December 31st, year one. So we want to know what is the depreciation recorded at the end of the year? We're not going to do a full year. We're not going to do this. No, that's wrong. It's placed in service on June 30th. So we're just going to calculate half the year's worth of depreciation. Specifically, think about it. We place it in service on June 30th. So there's July, August, September, October, November, and December. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. No, six months. Six months, right? July, because... We're placing in service on June 30th. We don't get any depreciation for the month of June. So July, August, September, October, November, December, that's six months. Six months worth of depreciation. So we're going to take $41,000 over four years, and then we're going to multiply that by six months over 12 months. Because remember, four years it's on a yearly basis, and when you multiply that all out, you're going to get $5,125, and that is how much depreciation expense is allowed for the year. So this question shows you how important it is to pay attention to the dates, right? We saw a pretty simple example of straight line method, but then we had a, um, a kink in here where it was placed in service on a date other than than. January 1st, where you get the whole year. And because of that, we had to take a portion, right? So if I told you this was placed in service on October 31st, well, you'd have November, December, you would take two months over 12 months. If I told you it was placed in service on January 31st, you would take 11 months. If I told you it was placed in service on April 30th, remember the, you know, 30 days have September, April, June, and November, 30 days have, uh, 30, sorry, 
April 30th. If I told you it's placed in service April 30th, then you would have uh, eight months, right? Because you have May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. It's eight months. You'd have eight months over 12 months. So just keep that in mind. You have to take into account when's placed in service. And with that, we calculate, we use our formula. But remember, that's on a yearly basis. So we have to adjust it for partially placed in service during the year.